Have you ever wanted to grow your own food, but maybe you don't have a garden space or it's too cold where you live or you just don't like digging in the dirt? Time to check out hydroponics in this new video series called Look Ma, No Soil. Welcome everybody. If you're new here, my name is Boss. I'm a gardener and a lover of all things spicy. I like to grow peppers primarily, but I grow other vegetables year round, outdoors and indoors. In this series, Look Ma, No Soil, I'm going to be showing you how I grow vegetables as cheaply as I possibly can. To get started, let's talk about what is hydroponics. So hydroponics means growing plants in water, right? Hydro means water, right? Ponics comes from ponos, which is to do work. So it's really let the water do the work. And that's kind of what we're talking about. So hydroponics for a gardener is growing plants without the use of a nutrient rich soil, right? Using a nutrient rich water solution to feed your plant directly at the roots. That's not to say that you won't have other things involved. You don't just drop seeds in a puddle and outgrow plants. Um, you're typically going to have some sort of mechanical media. So something to hold the plant up. Often that looks something like this. Right, where you have roots growing down into solution supported in this little tiny bit of what is actually compressed peat um, and a little plastic net cup here. And in this case, I am growing inside of a laundry pod container. So hydroponics is really easy to do. You can use stuff you have around the house. I'm a huge proponent of reusing containers. You only need a few basic tools and supplies, and we'll cover that in this episode. And we'll talk about the different approaches and types of systems that people use growing hydroponically, but I'm gonna keep it really simple, and we're gonna use specifically passive hydroponics in this series. Let's get started. So there's a lot of different ways you can do hydroponics. Which one is best for you is really up to experimentation, and that's part of the fun. What I like to use primarily is called passive hydroponics, or the Kratky method. In passive hydroponics, we don't need any electricity other than to power light if we're growing indoors. There's no air pumps, there's no water pumps. It's a very basic system. The idea is your plant grows in a container with nutrient solution that also has an air gap, right? So the nutrient in this container is right about eh, three fifths of the way up, right? It's a little better than half. These roots sit about to here in that solution. From here on up, they're in this kind of humid air gap that allows oxygen to get to that plant. Plants need not just nutrients, they can't live directly underwater, they still need to breathe, right? Just like us. So we put their feet underwater, they have a little bit of headspace here for some oxygen, and that's really all there is to it. We'll get deep into the specifics in this series since this is how we're gonna be growing. Another very common type of hydroponic system is called deep water culture or DWC. This is very similar to a passive system, except that you introduce an air pump. So like an aquarium air pump and an air stone. This will let you aerate the water and keep the nutrient level higher in the container so that the roots are pretty much always submerged and you're feeding it oxygen and carbon dioxide through the bubbler. So that's deep water culture. Nutrient film technique or NFT is where you might have seen maybe like rain gutter looking apparatuses um, where there is a bunch of plants in a row. And what they're actually doing there is pumping nutrient solution out of a reservoir up into the system and letting it run across the roots of the plants. And so you get this mixture of air and nutrient rich water that go across the roots of the plant, giving it everything it needs. Um, it is an active system, so you're constantly running that pump. It works really well, especially for things like leafy greens where you don't necessarily have huge root masses. Um, if you're growing things like peppers, like is in this container here, you might start to have a problem with roots clogging the system. Um, so there's just things that you think about and as you learn and try different techniques, you will figure out what works best for you. Another very common type of hydroponic system you might see is actually called aeroponics. And this is where instead of having an actual reservoir in the container, you have um, like high pressure sprinkler heads misting the roots with that nutrient solution on a regular basis. Not always constantly, you might run it on a system of, you know, once every 10 to 15 minutes, but you're keeping those roots moist, but not submerged with that nutrient solution. And again, similar to NFT, they get a mixture of air and nutrient solution on the roots at all times. That seems to work pretty well. Also, I'm interested in building a rig. I haven't done it yet. so. Maybe that'll be the next part of this series. And then finally, there are systems that are kind of what you might call drain and flood or flood and drain. These systems will essentially have the plants in a bed of media that is 
inorganic. It's not feeding them. And then they use a pump to fill that bed with nutrient solution and then let it drain back down. So again, you're submerging it for a short period of time and then draining it back down. That way you don't drown the plants. You keep the roots moist and full of air as well because that media that they're growing in allows air in between it, right? Typically it's things like LECA or hydrogen, um, sometimes cocoa coir, anything that's inorganic, perlite, to hold the plant in place so you can flood the basin and then drain it back down. This works pretty well for people. Again, it's an active system, so you're going to need a pump that works really well and you're going to need to have good drainage. Um, and moving parts just add to problems sometimes. There's other things and lots of other types. These are just some of the most common that you'll see, especially if you look on YouTube. There's also aquaponics where you use a fish tank and let the nutrients come from the fish waste to feed your plants. Pretty cool. I really want to try that sometime as well. Haven't done it yet. For this series though, we are talking about passive hydroponics. Well, we should talk about the basic supplies of what you're going to need. And then some of the things that I would highly recommend you invest in as well. You don't have to spend a ton. But if you invest in a few other key things, you'll be happy in growing hydroponically for years. So, okay, like I said, you're, you're going to need some stuff, right? This looks like a lot, but it's actually not too bad when you break it down to realize I've got multiples of things here just to show you you have options, right? First and foremost, you need a container to grow hydroponically, something that doesn't have holes in the bottom. Some of my favorite containers to use are things like these amber mason jars, old coffee jars, and as you saw before, laundry pod containers are a perfect size and easy to manage. You can really use anything. You'll want to make sure you don't use something that will have a problem having water in it for a long period of time. I'm also going to be using in this series five gallon buckets and I'll show you why in the next episode as we create our containers and get started. On top of a container you're going to need something to hold the plant and give its roots a way to grow down. Usually that'll be a net cup. These are the easiest they're very inexpensive. I buy them at the hydro store. You can also get them online at Amazon. I happen to like this particular brand, CZ. They're thicker, more durable. I've used these very same cups for now four years, so they're not going to fail you if you buy good ones. This is going to sit in your container like that and let the roots hang down into the nutrient solution. That's why it's a net. Net cups are vital to me, right? These are must-have equipment. People will take things like a red solo cup and cut holes all through it and use that. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to buy something, if I'm going to buy plastic, that I can use and reuse and reuse. You also need something to grow your plants in. And I know you're thinking it's hydroponic. They're growing in water. But again, here's that inert media. The most common is rock wool. So these are cubes of expanded rock, I guess. Um, they're very lightweight. They're very much the same rock wool that you might find in like insulation panels for walls. They typically come in different sizes. These are two inch squares. The reason I use two inch squares is because I use three inch net cups. Net cups also come in different sizes. What you want to just make sure that you do is don't buy two inch squares and one inch net cups or one inch squares and three inch net cups. The two inch fill the three inch net cup pretty well, as you can see. Rock wool holds moisture really well. And that's part of why we use it. This is actually how we're going to be starting our seeds for this video series as well. We'll moisten these, put the seeds in and let them go. Another popular um, media to grow hydroponically is hydrogen or LECA or these little clay pellets, right? For lack of better words. These are also used oftentimes in conjunction with a net cup or with net cups that have rock wool to put on top around the base of your plant to block light because you don't want to have algae growing on your rock wool. A lot of times if you're doing cuttings, you'll take this LECA, you'll put your cutting and roots right through the bottom of your neck cup and then surround it to hold the stem in place. Lots of different uses for these things. Again, they're inert, they're lightweight, they're inexpensive. I highly recommend everybody buy some. You can reuse them year after year. You can just wash them, reuse them. So again, it's a one-time upfront investment. You're not going to have to buy those every time you start new plants. Those are the basic mechanical things you need to grow. But of course, you need to have nutrients for your plants as well. So I use liquid nutrients. I don't mess with powdered nutrients for hydroponics simply because they're harder to mix up. It's as simple as that. I'm lazy. <laughs> so I use one part nutrients as much as possible. In this series, I'm going to be using Dynagrow products. This isn't sponsored. 
I just like these. I've been using them for a couple of seasons now. It's easy. I used to use General Hydroponics uh, Flora Series, which is a three part. So you had to mix together three different bottles of nutrients at the right ratios, depending on what life stage your plant was at. It works great. I don't have time for that. So uh, I like Dynagro. This is a complete nutrition for your plants. So it has not just the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that your plant wants. It also has micronutrients and everything a plant needs to be healthy. So one bottle for the grow stage, one bottle for the bloom and flower stage if you're growing plants that flower and fruit. So for my peppers, I will switch over to the bloom formula pretty earlier in their lives. So I want them to encourage early and fast flowering and fruiting. Grow is great for things like leafy greens, basil, herbs, things that you don't necessarily want to encourage flowering on. It'll help them grow really fast and really healthy. So you'll need to invest in liquid nutrients. Use whatever you can afford. Use whatever you can find locally, ideally, right? You can also have it shipped. Again, Amazon has all of this stuff. Amazon has everything. Come on. With the nutrients, you're going to want to have just a cheapo dropper or some way to easily measure out five milliliter units. Almost all of them work in five milliliters or one teaspoon um, for their dosage recommendations. So... Get a dropper. To me, that's the easiest way to do it. pH becomes an issue for hydroponics as well. So you're going to need to be able to measure the pH of your nutrient solution and then adjust it to make sure it's where the plant is happy. Plants want the pH for hydroponics to be between five and a half and six and a half, roughly. Being a little lower or a little higher won't necessarily kill your plant, but it will drastically reduce the ability of that plant to uptake nutrients across the spectrum. You're going to need to measure your pH somehow. There's pH test indicator liquids that you can use. You can get pH meters that are electronic. I've invested about 50 bucks in this one. There's much cheaper options. These guys you can get on Amazon all day long for $12, $13. They work fine. You just have to calibrate them almost every time you use them. So you'll have to invest in extra calibration solutions. Not a huge deal, but 12, 13 bucks, that's pretty cheap and pretty darn accurate. What happens if your pH is still too high? Typically, that's what you'll get is a pH that's too high. If your pH is too low, you'll need another product called pH up. But to fix a pH that's too high, you'll use pH down. Again, this comes from a bunch of different brands. You can buy it at your local hydro or gardening store. You can also get it online. A very, very small amount of this is needed to lower pH. So we'll get into mixing nutrients in one of our next episodes, and you'll see just how important it is to use this sparingly. And then the last things that you're going to really want to have around that are, you know, optional, but pretty much mandatory, you want to have a grow light of some sort if you're growing indoors. You can grow hydroponically outdoors, so you can use the sun as your grow light. That's the absolute cheapest way to go. But if you're going to be doing this indoor, especially if you want to do it year round, I would highly recommend grow lights. So there's a ton of different options for grow lights. I'm not going to get into all of that today. The important thing to know is that if you buy a cheapo, low power grow light, you won't be able to grow most things. If you invest a little bit more, even this Sansi brand 70 watt LED grow panel, I've grown pepper plants to full production, no problem, right? But if you get one of these eight or 14 watt bulbs from Walmart, you might be able to grow a single head of lettuce. That is to say, you don't also need to jump right into the deep end and go get this 800 watt behemoth, four foot by four foot, $500, $600 grow light. That's probably overkill. If this is something you love and you want to invest in it over time, again, grow lights last forever. LEDs are the way to go. Don't get the old HPS, um, high pressure sodium or metal halide lights. They work great, but they get really hot. They're expensive. They have a shorter lifespan. LEDs are awesome, affordable, and really efficient these days. And then lastly, one thing I'm going to recommend, but is not necessary for anything we do in this course. Uh, again, I'm lazy. Invest in a hole saw for your drill. So a hole saw is basically just this wonderful piece of equipment that spins in a circle and makes a big hole. <laughs> the reason you'll want this, and you'll want to do two things. One, pick which size of net cup you want to use and stick with it. That's what I do. Everything I do uses three inch net cups. A lot of people, probably more people, use two inch net cups. So adjust your decisions accordingly. I've got a three inch hole saw for a three inch net cup. Why? Because it's just wide enough that the lip of the net cup will sit nicely in a hole that I make for it. This takes me three, four seconds. You can also just take a sharp knife, trace a line and cut your hole out. We're using mostly thin plastic kind of lids. So not that big a deal. If you go with something like these mason jars, they already have a three inch opening and your net cup will sit directly 
in there. You don't need to worry about creating a hole. I like a hole saw. They can be 15 to $40 a piece. They're not super inexpensive. So that's a choice. You don't have to invest in that. But I would say absolute musts, containers, net cups, rock wool, hydroten, leka, whatever you want to call these, pH measuring and adjusting equipment, and a grow light. With that investment up front, you can grow plants and food for yourself and your family indoors year round for years to come. In the next episode, we're going to start our seeds, get our containers built, and get going on growing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. We will see you next time on Look Ma, No Soil. <laughs>